Hold up. I haven't done that in a while. All right, here we go. Welcome everyone to Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of the nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you. It was clearer than in the last few weeks. I like it. I like it. I I didn't do anything different. Mm, here we go. So, previously on Bears and Dragons, uh, what happened last time? Well, we did make it back, uh, get the caravan of, um, supplies to Grekelstug in, uh, hopes of trading it for weapons to fight an upcoming battle. Um, found out that Grekelstug was in... Great distress, kind of like and stuff, due to our involvement in the past. I got a pet Drake uh, from Thumberchard. We found Edamox Boon mm -hmm. um, with the help of. Stools um, Grove. They uh, established a new grove not too far from Edamox Boon, and they were able to help us find it. And as we were in there, we realized it was also the lair of a basilisk. And we heard it coming behind us. So, you got him. Uh, what happened at Thumberchot? You said you know. got a gift from him, but... Yeah, we... I don't think I ever found out what happened to him. I believe... The rumors that people were hearing because the way they actually really saw it was that he was killed. Knew a lot of the order of the flame. The uh, keepers of the flame were killed. The keepers a of the flame of were decimated. But yeah. Also, uh, from rumors that uh, I believe Syrah and Holly would have heard, would have, while being relatively incognito with the caravan, guarding the caravan while they can do their trading, um, was uh, that the rumors were that. Thunder Todd was killed in the kilns right now. The forges of Grackle Stug are currently not doing so well. So here we are in Entebox Boon. In fact, uh, I would call this. Here's the original chamber. We're in. Uh, feel free to uh, place yourselves where you think of your map. We have uh, four stone pillars. 
surrounding what looks to be a ritual circle in the center. So these are not they just can block vision. They basically go up to the ceiling about 60 feet up. And this is just a flat circle and just put it in for decoration. And while you're Wh which around roof? Which way were we coming in from? Uh, you came in from the north where you where after searching around the room you heard behind you some hissing sounds after discovering some stone bits which uh, looked like they were petrified remains of pe uh, people who were petrified most likely by basilisks. And you pretty much could be anywhere in the, the chamber too. Because you did go into the chamber and look around before you heard the hissing sound. Age, probably. Probably cl no, close to the doorway. Oh. Is one thing we're missing. And I believe you were hiding behind pillars. I was invisible over here. And because, uh, let's see. Do we know they're bathless? Yeah, I believe somebody did identify them as a basilisk. Hey, Holly. How you doing? You guys, don't forget. <laughs> um, I've probably forgotten what you were just about to remind us not to forget about yeah uh don't forget uh you came with a red drake so just put a token on the map to include which is not invisible just gonna I, I believe everybody like went and hid behind a pillar or something okay this one's is all be different over here And Karad, you had called Ember over. Uh, yeah. Is it a boy or girl? Boy. I assume. Or is it a Zay? Or... They have worms, it was but... A, it was a boy. Not... No traits. No, I got a token right on the map already. Oh, is that this? Mm hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have a red Drake, but I did find other Drakes. Thanks to owning the Horde of the Dragon Queen pack. Just tell me where you want him. Um, I'll have him over here by me. Right. Do I have everybody? Oh, no, oh, wait. There was somebody else who came with you. Oh, it's stool.
And with that, I think it's probably time to roll initiative. You forgetting the dice that I have? Uh, nice. It has a lot of sound effects. Wow, got a bunch of 22s. Uh, Sarah, what's your de dex bonus? I have a plus five. Okay, so you will definitely be going first. What's Holly's dex bonus? Plus two. Plus two? Okay, roll these. Yeah. Uh, just roll a d20 for me. All right, so Holly will go. My icon get her in turn order? Uh, nope. You're on there. You're at the top. Uh, how is on the top? I see you on top. Really? I don't see it. I see Holly on top. I don't see Syra on the order tracker. Interesting. Does it put Syra on there twice? From what I saw. Let me just do this. I'm there in spirit. Okay. Do you see yourself now? Uh, at the bottom, yeah. Yes, at the bottom, yep. Yeah. Now you should see yourself at the top. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, and with that, Syra, you heard the bass list, but you're hiding behind a pillar. Currently can't see them. You know the general direction. Well, knowing that they will turn me to stone upon sight, I am going to just back up one more time, and I'm going to cast myself a good old arcane eye. Ever. I will have it hovering up, in, up above us so I can see the whole room, and I'll keep my eyes shut. And 
bonus bonus action for my blade song. Pull out the blade, get ready to strike, and that'll end my turn. All right, Holly. All the Just rolling this to check something. Nope, she went no. All right. So she is going to move up to here. Going right, to. I need her to quickly make me a uh, Constitution saving throw. Thirteen. Okay. She feels um, her, her her watery skin start start hardening, but she's able to shrug it off. She is going to rage. Erg, arg. I need a deck saving throw from both of them. What's the DC? 16. 16. Someone succeeds and the other saves. They both succeed? Mm hmm. Uh, no, one okay. succeeds, the other fails. Oh, you said save. So I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> but they take half, so... Four lightning damage. And we're going to do the good old Reckless. Great Weapon Master. I'm guessing a 22 hits. 22, 22 will hit. That's 20 damage. Takes a good chunk out of the Basilisk. She's gonna rear up and just do her thing. Same thing. I'm guessing a 12 doesn't hit. Oh yeah, okay. Yep, 12 does not hit. He swings down and just raises the uh, thick hide off from the uh, basilisk, but doesn't really and that's it. That's it. All right, Gage. I'm gonna burn his eyes. Light up the bomb bringer. And he knows that they were coming from here. He's just gonna kind of like peripheral vision. Get close. And uh, make a couple swings. And... Oh, that's a disadvantage. Thing. It's quick. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, wait. Yeah. That hurt. Well, that's, that, that doesn't seem right. Oh, no, that's right. Cool. He's going to make a second attack this time. He's going to properly dis. Oh. Mm. And. And does uh, 10 points of damage. He's going to keep inverting his eyes. Karad! We had to put this on. Karad. Um, so he's going to look to see where they are, notice that their location, and then turn around because, uh, not, and yeah, turn around from him. And then he. Going to yeah. go ahead and cast emulation on this one. So I need a deck saving throw. Uh, and which one? I'm sorry. That one. Deck saving throw. Not very dexterous. They fail. Oh, shit. <laughs> so he takes 54 damage. Uh, Gage feels a lot of heat as uh, you basically incinerate Basilisk he was just fighting. As it turns to ash. If the damage from the spell kills a target, the target is turned to ash. I'll just pull it out. Uh, no, I think I might have click that one to save it so I'm just and then he's just gonna tell what um ember just like stay there close your eyes you want nothing to happen to him All right, stool. Ranged. 
He's going to be averting his eyes as well. And for fun, he's just going to cast a... He's just going to cast the Blight on the remaining <laughs> one. Nope, he's going to kind of scoot over. You got to move. I think that's enough. And go, go, uh, stool. Only in the last one. They both fall over dead. Uh, sorry, Lasseter. <laughs> <laughs> what are your easiest fights? That emulation spell, though. Yeah. And then the nice big old blight coming from stool. Spellcasters for the win. You could have saved from it, but I'm not sure how much it would be saved. Ta -da. With the Basilisk dead, you're free to continue to explore. I'm sorry, I going to keep up her. Arcane Eye, because now she's paranoid that there's more of these things. <laughs> Oof, I've never cast that before. You hear in your head? That was cool. Good job, buddy. You did well. Boop, 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 boop. Got much stronger since we, since we first met her. Yeah, I've been practicing. Uh, with, uh, I hate to say with some annoyance to, to my girl, but uh, it's it, it, they've gotten used to it. Have you and your your new group been running into a lot of trouble down here? Uh, on occasion, but not really. Um, it, it feels like, I don't know, it, it, the Grove feels really safe. I don't know how to really describe it. Because it seems like, like if we like wander too far from the Grove, uh, we might run into something, uh, but... But if we're even if we're being chased, once we're like close to the grove, um, whatever's tra chasing us seems to struggle away. Well, that seems good. Maybe if you built more of these groves, the underground would be safer for everybody. I mean, I'm not sure if we can because the, the I mean. I mean, we could probably make more groves, of course, but, you know, kind of like never light, but, uh, um, but the one we have, I mean, we still need to rebuild, but there's not much buzz around. Um, we need to support some, some new kids. Um, but I, I, the, the, like the light that's coming from, from the top of the caverns, uh, that was there when we got here. And and when we came in, it just felt warm and biting, and here we are. I think I had a growth spurt during that time. I don't know why. 
How did you come you? across your? Did you come across your old, your old group, while you've been traveling? Like other people from Neverlight? I didn't see anything from yeah. like, my mom or dad. And, but you know, I think they were killed in the process of me getting captured. Oh, I got I'm a sorry. Home. I got a new family, so. I'm happy enough. I like it here. There's just something about the, that that cavern, which is just nice. We want to kind of make the place more kind of like a, a respite. People come along lost or something. Hungry, something. We'll take them in. Help him heal. Well, especially with our spirits being taken by the drow. I mean, if, oh, if yeah. they're able to get away and find your growth. Well, why do we need to, you know, we need, we need more, more sports bonds. We need more kids. Hopefully I don't find it. I mean, it, I mean, looking from you trying to find it, it was really hard for you guys to find it, so. I think we're pretty hidden at least enough. Besides, we have our methods. Oh, I'm sure. Hey, do you mind if we, uh, if I take these Basilisk corpse with me? Go you ahead. Handy. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Yay! Uh, Shall we be on our way? Sure. Uh, hold on. Um, yeah, I'll be with something. He, he actually uh, reaches into a, to a bag and, and pulls out some rope and a big and a harness, and he he says. Uh, he starts tying one end of the rope to one of the basilisk tails and the other end to the other basilisk tail. And then he ties it to this harness. He says, yeah, can somebody put this on me? Ron. Ron's not with you. Damn it. It's, this ended up being player characters. Uh, uh Holly. Yeah, shoot your head. Okay. Okay, hold on one sec. And and he transforms into um a uh uh deep uh rote. Big old bison type creature. Looks like it's definitely from here. It doesn't look like anything that you would see on the surface. Holly uh Secures the harness, and he starts just like romping down the hallways, back towards Daylight Grove. How big is he? Uh, he's probably a large creature now. Uh -oh. <laughs> he's literally grown. <laughs> well, I mean, like in his normal form, he's he's medium, so like four and a half feet. Probably as tall as crab. So, not big enough to give us a ride. Well, uh, in, in <laughs> the current a current creature form, he might be able to to carry one person, but he's also dragging two basilisks. Eh, it's not worth it. Well, if you shrunk yourself down. You have those mushrooms on you. Or maybe you do. I do. I think, but I don't know. There's no point. <clears throat> no. Let's go. Actually, mm -hmm. if, if he needs help carrying it, I can always 
pop up a sensor's floating disk. Uh, you would think out of his current form, he can easily drag them. Okay. He just needed some extra strength to to pull them. Get them situated. In in his in his uh, Mike and Ed form, he's not that strong. In this form, no problem. Uh, it, it 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 does take you about an hour to hour to get back uh, to Daylight Grove, uh, the cavern. You the very humid feeling. The light that was coming from the ceiling seems to actually have disappeared right now, just because of the time of day. You could assume that easily enough. Uh, stool uh, uh, starts tromping up towards uh, uh, where Basidia is, is staying, uh, her audience platform, you could say. Uh, and uh, as he get, gets close, he turns back into his micronid form. The harness just kind of falls to the ground. Um, and uh, there seems to be a brief conversation. And Basidia does uh, or, uh, has a couple of the adult micronids uh, take the basilisks and move them onto some stone platforms. Mm -hmm. Forms. We will keep these for later. They will be helpful in the future. I hope you were able to find what you were looking for. Yes. Excellent. Uh, it is quite late. If you would like to, you're very welcome to stay here. We do have some um, moss bedding. Thing. She points points over in another direction, and you see uh, uh, a couple of mycid adults. Uh, 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 basically set to attend to uh, guide you to where they have their, their basically their non mic and sleeping quarters. They're really quarters, they're just like a, a big soft uh, moss patches. Uh, well, uh, on one. Yeah. Find a little private patch of grass and pop out Silva just to have her as a companion near me. Yep. Uh, it's and... not grass, it's moss. Um, well, but it is actually quite soft. Soft grass. <laughs> Slightly different texture. Moss yards are beautiful things. Uh, there is a, a little bit of a, a circle of stones that are, are near it. And it's kind of like a few of these patches that are surrounding this stone section. And there looks to be some zirkwood. You know, um, nearby that have been cut up into what you might think of as like logs. Uh, who wants first watch? Do we do we really need one? I don't know. I mean, from what he's from what Stool said, this is like one of the safest places down here. You want to trust that? I, mean, I trust Duel, don't you? All right. Let's go to sleep. You all I'm bed down. I'm assuming maybe Crad makes some dinner for you bed down, or yeah, take some usual like moral. Yeah. And uh, the evening 
evening? Question mark. Uh, goes quite quietly. You do hear some sounds of, of caverns and I swear you hear the sounds of insects. But it sounds like a quiet night in a forest for you service dwellers. Karad, it is a little odd considering where you come from. Um, instead of the sounds of a, a underdark city, this seems a little alien. It takes me just a little bit longer to fall asleep. Uh, and then fall asleep for just a little bit longer. Ember is curled up right next to you and just like softly. <clears throat> Lasseter. While you're sleeping, you dream. You feel a warmth of some kind. And you, <laughs> and you look around in the stream and, and you see a lion on the ground with his claws right over each other, crossed. Looking down at you is an ancient gold dragon. Oh, there's glass. I'm just kidding. And he says... Well, my friend, looks like you're almost here back. You think so? Just one more fight, and you'll return. Be nice. Yes. Warm... Now you also need to do something about that drinking. One step at a time. Don't get me wrong, I'd like a, dr a good drink. But you have to know your limits. Fortunately for me as a dragon, uh, <laughs> mine is much more than yours. I know my limits. I just choose to ignore it. Also, when you reach the surface, keep in mind that necklace isn't going to last forever. Oh, I, I kind of thought it with um our thing ah my little avatar possibly so, no yeah he needs to be be close by and once the sun hits it it will no longer be effective and considering the um, kinship you've been around, you might not what necessarily I... get all the opportunities that you would want to. What if I keep it and like use it when it's at when it's nighttime? But would it still work? There's only one way to find out. Okay. Um. Uh... Well, thanks for your help all this time, I think. No, yeah, I can do the little that I can. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna go back to my rot dreams and, um, see you some other time in some other dreams. Maybe one day I'll the dra dragon, dragon bellows of a, a, a thunderous guffaw. Well, we dreams, and he just seems to fade into a gold dust, and you continue with your own normal, and you slowly get back to your normal dreams. <laughs> Wake up. 
Everything seems fine. Uh, there is... The cavern seems to be a little bit brighter now. As beams of sunlight are streaming down into the cavern. Is that sunlight? Only a nature check. Oh. Well, I, I realize that I said that out loud, but I, I guess I would only be talking to everyone except for Pride. <laughs> um, you said insight or nature? Nature. I love him. Stand in it, look up. And they're bright, but mm, hard to tell. It doesn't feel like the warmth of sun. It is warmer being in this beam of light than it is anywhere else in the cavern, but it does have the hue, but mm, can't quite tell. Guys, I feel like this is the, that's the sun, but that's impossible because we're in the underdark. And remember, he explained to us that this cavern has its own weird lighting to it. It kind of mimics the sun's sunlight, but it's like their own little light source down here. Okay, well, uh, pleasant dreams, everyone. I'll do my daily, uh, no, the physicals or whatever. <laughs> Check-ins. Yep. Don't forget to drink water. You should drink, eat more protein, whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Brad, you making breakfast? Oh, of course. Uh, Ember will actually uh, crawl into one of the beams of the light and like curl, curl up, and he looks very, very comfortable. He's enjoying being in the sun or the light. What do you do? Guess once everything's done, done. I uh, guess it's time for us to head back to the blending stone. Let them know we found Endemox Boon. <laughs> is um where where is uh the stool with us or he's is he? Kind of with his own group. Stool kind of like, like it was with his own boot uh, group, but he you do see uh, him walk up uh, with two basilisks at his side. Um, side and side. He said, hi, everybody. Good morning. Morning? Is that what it's called? I feel like it's called morning. I don't are know. The, are the basilisks moving by themselves or? Did it look dead? Yeah, we animated them. Oh. You, you do see on... See the... Well, actually, it's only one basilisk now that I think of it, because one of them was burnt to ash. We you see, you see the, the... The scar... Well, not really a scar, but you see the... The wound where Holly... Uh, smacked her, her axe into into the basilisk and you do see the looks like what was formerly some necrotic uh patches that were on it it is now seeming to be covered with moss moss and the wound actually looks like it kind of has like a some sort of vine growing through it lasso mm -hmm. looks at them in disgust 
looks at a stool with disgust. He tries to fight it, but, you know, can't. And then he looks away, and he says, one more fight. One does more look, fight. Does look like there's a couple more, a couple of mushrooms along, his, along the scales of the, of the creature. I mean, this is a new thing for us. I don't know what's wrong. Hmm? I mean, to each their own, but it is somewhat strange to see the the dead walking again. Well, I mean, it's, it's he, he doesn't think for himself or anything like that. Doesn't have the whole like like turn you to stone thing or, or anything. It's really just body. We're just animating it. Hey, otherwise it was just going to sit there. Rock. Might as well make use of it. As things should. You know, the natural process. Well, eventually he's going to decay a bit. I mean, we can't fully stop the decay process, but while it's there, we might as well animate it. I'm not having this conversation. He just walks away and... <laughs> oh, I think I might have disturbed Blaster. Mm -hmm. oh, he'll be okay. I think he's just... anxious to get back to his home. Well, I mean, and don't get me wrong. If you want to, why not look around? You're very welcome to. Well, see, what else can you show us about this place? Some, oh, I did see so we did find some like interesting drawings on the on the cavern wall carvings. I don't know. There's been some strange. There is some strange iconography, but it, the place ended up seeming very welcome. Would you like me to show you? Uh, well, sure. School and is basilisk. Uh, uh, start jaunting down into towards further into the cave from where you cavern where you've entered, and he takes you to uh, a place where there's seems to be a maybe it's a shrine of some kind. Um, on the wall, there looks to be like a Head of a serpentine creature carved on the wall, and surrounding it are two smaller, winged looking creatures. Is there any kind of writing? Uh, you do see some writing, looks like a. Um, it, you would take out some sort of glyphic sort of writing kind of looks more like uh like dots and and like triangles of some type it does look like there is some writing <clears throat> there's looks like some around each of the creatures uh could i try to comprehend languages yeah you're welcome to do that just give me a few moments, Stool. Let me see if what I can make of this, and I'll start my ritual. And cast it. And I'll kind of run my hands over the, uh, the characters of the script. The names you can start to make out. Um, uh, 
the the script which is below this this image uh says i mean the light of the platinum dragon protect in the dark Around each of the uh, seven winged creatures, you see the fang, the presence, the tail, the voice, the wing, the eye, the claw. Just above the big serpentine head, you see... see Platinum Dragon. Well, I think David knows what this is, but... Um, religion check? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you definitely know what this is. Uh, this is some iconography about... Bahamut. And his seven worm, great worms that hang out with him. Oh, I think this is something to do with with Bahamut, the the, the, the platinum dragon god. Dragon is that the 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 like the red creature that we that you guys hung out with? That's kind of like, like a big version of that thing. A, a little ember here? Oh, uh, this is much, much bigger than that. Wow. No. Like, like, this is, this is the dragon. Wow. So maybe this is like a place of protection? And, uh... Neat. Seems to be okay with us being here or something, I'm guessing, because... Like, literally, when we started growing our growth, it, like, grew really fast. It was, like, welcoming us. I guess that's one of the reasons why we want to, to, to welcome people here. I don't know. I don't know much about this dragon guy. I don't know anything about wonder this. If, I wonder if Flacidor's bar cat would, uh, Behave differently here, because he hasn't—he hasn't been summoned here, has he? Yeah, sir. Do you, yeah. I, where are you even around here? Or did you stay back at the camp? Back. Okay. <laughs> but I do have Borkhead with me. I believe. Is I think we. Yeah. He's just laying on a patch. Pat patch of moss. He's actually laying on a patch of moss that's in one of the sunbeams that Ember's not in because Ember's hogging one of them. Actually, no. He's probably lying on Ember. Ember seems to not really care because Little Boar Cat's not really bothering him. He's just laying on him. Sir, so what kind of uh, excitedly go, go find Karad and, and Lassiter. Would that make so, me and uh, Karad like cousins or uh, some no. type of... No? no. Okay. No relations. But wouldn't it be nice? No. The <laughs> idea of... <but, laughs> Assuming Syria exposits everything she found. Oh. Um. Oh, I look. Well, especially, especially it's a crab. Do you think? Do you think little Ember would flourish here if, if he stayed, or if you stayed here with him? That's. We can go check the area out. See how things are. He seems to be liking I mean, this area a lot. I mean, if this if this place is like bathed in Bahamut's light, I mean, he would probably grow stronger than he normally would have. 
Ja. Uh, show us, I guess. Go to the train. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody and I, would, I would, I would bring Ember with. Ember, uh, as you start moving towards it, Ember like perks up, starts quickly following you. Borkad just kind of like flutters up, like surprise, startled. And seeing that Lasser is moving, he flies over to Lasser and wraps himself around his neck again. Yeah. Uh, you two get to to the shrine with Syra and um, Lasser. You immediately can read all the script. Um, Syra wasn't able to make it out because. Uh, there was no comprehend languages allows you to understand the language, but when the words don't really have a translation, it can be a little off. This is how I'm into comprehend languages. So you can actually read the names. So you see Regala, the Fang, Renaxia, the Presence, Marishok, the Tail. Rumar, the voice. Thongrad, the wing. Kurya, the eye. And a name that you're very familiar with, Orkad, the claw. There is also the name Bahamut above the platinum drum. Uh, you wow. do notice... Actually, uh, can everybody roll me a perception check? Perception... Um, Syra and Lasser, you do you you didn't pick it up the first time you were here, Syra. You were busy reading the names, but the where it said the claw, or as uh, Lasser had had um, had had read the name as Borkad, uh, you do see as Lasser had gotten closer and reading the script. It did give a soft gold glow. Uh, in addition, uh, you do see where Marishok the tail was identified. You do see a, what looks like a scratch or something almost as if somebody was trying to scratch it out. But it looks like it's mending. Like the stone. Like someone was trying to repair it. Like it was like it was scratched, but then it's starting to like unscratch itself. Correct. Yeah. Did, did do you see this this weird light coming from here? Uh, when you do point it out, Crad, you be able to see it. You just didn't oh. be able to spot it. That's interesting. And. Just... It looks like oh. there's like this. It looks like something was scratched out here too. But um, I'll I'll repeat all the names that you just said. Uh, these are uh Bahamut's underlings, wormlings. I don't know. I've been great worms. Uh, little, little Borkad actually, uh, seeing you kind of look and see the, the thing from Marishok actually kind of flutters up, looks at it, and then starts doing a, a version of a pseudo dragon dance in the hair, like he's <laughs> happy about something. Your little girlfriend, or, or boyfriend, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, or your friend. How about, uh, 
How about Ember? Is he reacting to it at all? Just Ember is just like looking at it like nothing seems different. Lost cousin. And nothing's reacting because of Ember? Nope. Oh. Uh, well, this seems like it's a temple, or I'm sorry, not temple, shrine of Bahamut, um, if you are asking. Other than that, is there anything special about this place, thing? It is you... obviously got the standard symbol of Bahamut with the head in profile. Um, doesn't it's just stone, so it's not. It doesn't look like anybody tried to color it or anything, but um, it does ha basically have the symbol of Bahamut, and then just has representations of the seven great worms. Let me throw a rock at it. Maybe it moves. Don't you dare! <laughs> Was that all you wanted to show us? Well, don't you think that's interesting? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I believe that Bahamut's light reaches everywhere, so this being here doesn't shock me. Nasser, hold me a deception check. And if anybody wants to insight what he just said, you're welcome to. Well, now I have to. Insight. Oh, well. Lasser's obviously telling the truth. He's not shocked about anything about the some sort of light, bomb um, light reaching down here. Really, really does give kind of an inconsistency in the way he says things, but you know, apparently he's telling the truth. But you know, this is really more lo the normal Lasseter talking, anyways. However, I am surprised to had come across one. Um, it is quite odd that it is here. Are we be on our huh? way? No, if, no. if there's, uh, unless there's something else that the uh, stool wants to throw us. It says, uh, you, you hear behind you. No, it's really, uh, besides the beams of light and uh, the, this, these carvings, this is pretty much it. Orcad, is there but something? At least we're going to what is it? You can um, send something. Uh, he gives you uh, the emotions of like uh, happiness. Um, it, it, this kind of feeling, like it's hard to tell. It's like when you a feeling of like when you're when you are excited because somebody you haven't seen in a long time is coming back and returning. You're just excited for them to arrive. I think something, someone's coming. Um, maybe it has something to do with this scratched off name. It wasn't the name that was scratched off of the image. Uh, oh, image? Yeah. He it just it, knew it, was, it to be that person. It was, it was, there was the name Marishok the Tail, and there was also a. An, uh, under it was a carving of a of a winged winged dragon. Oh, okay. Maybe you, has... you now recognize this is their depictions of dragons. Maybe it's the returning of this dragon or something. I don't know. Uh, can do I recall learning anything about this? <sighs> Uh, I can't pr remember how to pronounce its name. 
Marishock. 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 Okay. Uh, um, I mean, I, I, all you really know is uh, is even. Let's see. Do I have you rolling religion check? Roll me a religion check. Oh. oh, that's weird. Oh, my bad. 17. You haven't really, um, I mean, from your teachings, from, from your, you know, your clerical teachings, uh, you know of the seven great gold orders that accompany sure. Bahamut where it goes. That's all you really know. You don't know any specifics about what, like, what they're doing or if there was any sort of drama. <laughs> like, I don't know. Marishok did something and was sent down to, to, to live amongst the mortals for a while or something. You don't know. Uh, uh, I ask, what's his name? Borkad. Uh, who's this Marishok person? I'm sorry, Dragon. Uh, you, he sends you the feeling which you, you interpret as being, uh, brother. Oh. Uh, you like this brother? You, you seem excited, so I assume that you like him. Uh, you get a very happy feel. Okay. So he's a good dragon. Not, not someone that will chew us up on sight. He gives you an, uh, of course... <laughs> I mean, I've met some good people that are willing to uh, mangle you, but uh, you know. <laughs> but uh, okay. Well, you want to wait for him? Uh, Is he coming? You get the feeling it's like it's not happening here. Oh, uh, well, where is he coming? Give you a shrug. Uh, he's useless. I don't know what's happening. I think we have to find this Marishok dragon or thing. Uh, you, you do see Borkat kind of roll his eyes and, and kind of being like, don't worry about it. <laughs> This is decided something's going to happen. Well, you really can tell. You're not exactly sure. It's going to happen. It will you don't have to happen. Do anything. I mean, if you go to search for him, I mean, that could be a quest, but it's probably not down here. Um, Stole, was there anything else? No, as I said, the, the the only real features of the cavern that were really any interesting was the beams of light. And the... Great, let's go. Well, I'm glad we could help you out. Um, we're um sending. We got everything packed up for you. Um, and uh, we can help you. Uh, You're not so that you can oh. take it all away. <laughs> well, hopefully everything works out in Bling and Stone. Thank you, Stool. Welcome. Come visit again. I miss you. And you head off back to Blinden Stone with bags and bags and bags full of fungi. The good stuff. Uh, it does take you about a day to travel. Uh, uh, next door. <laughs> Or actually, oh, it takes two days. Excuse me. Get back to Blingden Stone. We are here. There you are. I announce our presence. I I'm just kidding. I don't do that. 
Hear ye, hear ye. Come up the ramp. Uh, guards, guards see you in your hall. We have returned. Uh, one of the guards says, uh, Karad! Yeah? Uh, there was a, a injured Durgar that stopped by looking for you. We sent him to to the foamy muck. I'm gonna have to kill That's someone. not good. Uh, Karad, I look at Karad. Are, are you ready to kill a friend? What the fuck? I don't know, he might be looking for you. For Obviously he's reasons. looking for me. For bad reasons. Do you have any friends that might want you dead? You must not remember anything about Grackle Stoop. How I betrayed my whole order. Exactly. So, so no, is... no, there is not anyone that wants me dead. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Dumbass. let's go meet this friend. Oh. My feelings are hurt. Let's go. So you make your way. Uh, do you want to go back to the phone the mug, or do you want to stop by the digger maddox? Basically, deliver your haul. Deliver the haul first. Head down to the digger maddox down here. Fourteen. And uh, as you were uh, uh, climbing up towards the towards their audience chamber, for lack of a better term, um, uh, one of the alchemists is like, <gasps> "Whoa, what's in all the bags? Is that what I think it is?" If you uh, think it's mushrooms, then yes. <gasps> yes, I'll come in. Pazook says, "What?" And he comes running out. <gasps> we got the fungi are here. Yes, we can get to work. And uh, they All start uh, taking. You guys know the. Oh. Uh, um. <laughs> they come and they're they uh, basically help unload all the fun guy. Good job. And man. Uh, a group of the uh, of uh, deep gnome alchemists start getting work on some concoctions to um, help protect the metal weapons that will be used in this battle. How long do you think it should, it should take to get it all ready? Uh, it's going to take a while. It's probably going to take a few days. Um, I think we should be okay. We're going to first uh, get the weapons that uh, the current guards uh, uh, that are nearby that are only back the incursions um, have so that they can continue doing that and this time not have to worry about having to get new weapons every day. Uh, and then uh, and then once we got that taken care of, we'll, we'll basically be just, we're going to be turning things out. This is going to take a lot of work, but um, we should be able to get everything done probably within a day. Ten days? Yeah, we're going to need a lot of weapons covered by all this. Look, uh, making this uh, this oil to coat these weapons, it's not an easy, quick thing to do. How will we know when ten days have passed? Don't worry, we'll come back to you. It's fine. I mean, just think of it this way. When you get tired, you go to sleep, that's the end of a day. What if I'm tired right now? I mean, I can't help you with that. Yeah. Now we go meet this friend of yours.
We didn't get any kind of description other than what their race was, right? Yeah. Um, if you had asked the guard, he said um, he had a long red beard. Um, he looked like he was looked like he had had some major injury to himself. Uh, and not, he was looked like he was at least relatively healed. Um, but he uh, wore a red cloak. A cloak uh, didn't have a shirt at all. Uh, very similar to the garb that Karad norm normally wears, but uh, it, that's really all they really could describe. But he was uh, using a blocking stick to move, and he was moving very, very slowly. Does that, like, the description... Um... He was yeah. also quite thick and chunky. Oh. Okay, that, they wouldn't use those words. <laughs> he was rotund. Does the description, like, jog any memories for a crowd? Uh, just roll me a history check for fun. Uh, I, I, wait a minute. History is intelligence. I want you to roll me a wisdom history check. So, I'm pretty sure Lasser wouldn't have, wouldn't know, but I feel like I know at least. Not. <laughs> is that is that with your wisdom or with your intelligence? Wisdom, because wisdom is my dumb stat. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, I was hoping to help you, but apparently that's not yeah. much of help. No, it would have been um, better if it was intelligence. <laughs> yeah, because this is kind of like an insightful sort of thing. Is insight yeah. a little better? Um, yeah, I have proficiency in insight. Oh, okay. What's your bonus for, for it's insight? It's a plus three. Plus three. So, so it would be, yeah, so it would be a 19. Um, it doesn't. Um, there, there was no one that, Honestly, there was no one that went shirtless uh, uh, amongst the Keepers of the Flames. You were pretty much the only one that did that. Um, it's the way they described the cloak didn't sound like a Keeper of the Flame thing. Um, maybe a type of cloak or anything like that. So, not jogging any memories. It doesn't feel like... You don't remember anybody on man with a red beard. I mean, there were old red beard old people, but not based off of the way they described him. Mm -hmm. My experience, folks, usually means that they're a bad guy. So be ready. Uh, I, I, I do want to put a slight add on to uh, your drop off of the mushrooms. The Digger Man at uh, Dorbo actually does come out. Oh, no. Uh, Senny actually comes out when she hears about the uh, fungi baby needlebird says, Oh, excellent. This will be very much help. Uh, we did mention uh, for you to look for uh, Entomox Boon. Did, were you able to find it by any chance? Oh, yes. Excellent. And I would pull out a map and kind of point to the area where it's at. Like a more detailed area because they're like it's in this area and I'd be like it's right here. Um, you hear I left you runes and she shouts out for uh, Nomi and Gurnick and uh, the uh, representatives of the Stoneheart Enclave and they help you point them in the right direction and they get super excited. It says this means we can get some elementals that will be. Much more powerful. Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, we will get to work. We'll find it. We will get this done. I can't wait. And they go like running off. Also, uh, we would also have said that if they need help finding it, to go to this, to basically go to Stool's Grove, tell them that we sent you and you're looking for this place and they could help you out. Were you, you found the way markers? Yes. I know there was a marker. Okay. 
uh, yeah, now that we know the more specific location, we should be able to find it just by that, uh, I think. So, uh, but we will be watching out for this growth that you're looking for. And if we do run into them, if they're inviting, just say that we're with you. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. That would be very much a huge boon to us. We're going to have elementals. We're going to have elementals. They go running off. Um, it says that uh, they do demonstrate that it will probably take them to some of the elementals that they're going to watch and to from get them from box boom back here is going to be this. The travel time is two days. Um, so it, overall, they think they're that they'll be back in a 10 day to uh, with everything they need. Nice. Are you head so, back uh, to the foamy mug, or do you have anything else before we get to? The um, foamy? we should stop by the store because our gems should, our stuff should be ready. I need to write better notes. It's there. It's on the way, so I, I guess. Yeah. Because it's those uh, spell gems. Ah, the spell gems. Uh, you get to Pazook's stall, and then you remember, as you're approaching it, you also remember that Pazook is over at Digger Magic Hall. But you do see at the stall uh, a female deep gnome uh, seems to be tending the store. No, Karad, you're not supposed to keep your friends waiting. You assume it's a friend. You've also assumed it was someone that was going to kill me. So I'm not going to listen to you. Well, well, you know, I'm a bit of a paranoid person, so uh, you shouldn't listen to me anyway. So yeah, I want to keep things as normal and just not listen to you. Good job. But I won't stop talking to you. Uh, uh, Lisa says, hello, welcome, what can I do for you? Uh, we had a um, order placed with, uh, for some spell gems. Uh, oh, I think there were some, what was the name? Crad. Oh, oh hold on. He, he goes back, back in the back room. Here's some wrestling. About a minute later, she comes out and there's this bag. Yeah. Uh, this is your order, I think. It's labeled that way, at least. Thank you. Welcome. Anything else? That should be it. Okie dokie. So, I worked out this plan. How about, instead of all of us walking in at once, we send in someone that the uh, guy isn't expecting, isn't looking for, so, looking for. So, Parade, you would stay out, and someone else would go in, and they'd look for this dark art. Probably shouldn't be that hard to see him uh and we scope him out how far away like how far of a walk are we from um the foaming mug uh location you are currently here and the foaming mug's way down here Okay. Or or I have a different idea. I just start walking. Good idea. Good job. I like this plan. And then as we get like as soon as the foamy mug become gets in sight. Mm -hmm. 
fireball. I like it. I'm just kidding. Go invisible. Go invisible. Ember stops in his track. Alright, I'm still here. Just keep walking. I started walking. <laughs> I think he still be able to like smell me. He he goes in your direction. Still a little confused. Uh, just, just keep on walking. We'll, we'll go in. Uh, wait, what about what about the dragon guy? Poor thing, a worm, Drake. We're he's, just gonna bring right. him in with us. Okay, he's gonna stay outside. Just. I'll tell Ember to, like, rest up against the wall. Ember does, but... Right, let's go in. Ember actually, as you open the door, uh, Ember actually peeks in. And then starts charging in. Oh. Uh, at one of the tables, uh, you do see the rest of the crew. You see Ron, you see the others. They're seeming to just be hanging out doing their thing. Uh, but at uh, one of the tables, you see Tappy and this Dorgar with a uh, red cloak, which looks to be red scaled cloak. Oh, and Ember runs up to the Dorgar and the Dorgar. Uh, oh, oh. You hatched. And starts petting, petting Ember, and Ember's like, mm. "All the balls." So gonna like <laughs> so go in, like I would like kind of be like in the middle, kind of and stuff, and uh, or towards the end, just make it so like. Happy uh, looks up and. And and the rest of the party comes in too, right? Mm -hmm. So he says, "Oh, you're back. Uh, where's Grad? Um, um, uh, Charlie uh, here has been looking for the Grad. Oh, Charlie, huh? <clears throat> um, and you see, he has has like a mug, which uh, from the smells smells like some sort of hot tea." <clears throat> That's a bit of a girl's drink, don't you? Don't you think? Is is? I mean, he's hurt. He doesn't need alcohol right now. He he needs something to help heal. I had some healing herbs. I brewed up in tea. Uh, this never fails. Trust me. Uh, Charlie says, "Ah, oh, yes, it's very nice." Thank you. So I'm going to make my way towards the stairs. Um, I kind of just get onto like the platform, so I'm just like on the other side, so like I can't see him. Drop invisibility, and then you cast message towards this person, and just be like, "Who are you?" The voice you hear. And he whispers back. Sounds very familiar. Well, Crad. You know me. You helped, you served me for a very long time. You were the only one I could trust. The voice sounds very much a very large adult red dragon you knew by the way you did not have to sneak in had to be careful I understand I'll come down the stairs towards him he as you enter from the stair stairs he's looking stairs. in your direction and he smiles. Uh, <laughs> Karad! Oh my god! Oh shit! Karad! Oh shut my up. god! 
That the the messaging was all you can hear it. So yeah, remember that. It's all whispers between us. I just slowly come up to him, seeing how he is and stuff. I give him like a strong but yet still gentle hug. He he gives you one back. Uh, he does look like ah. Yep. Sorry. Oh, they did a number on me. You did away. a number on them, I heard. They did take their chunk of flesh. But I see you made a place for yourself. And you were able to find this one. I'm glad. Um, oh no, I don't have that spell. Because it's magic gathering. The only possibility of a healing spell for a sorcerer. This is uh, sensing what you're you're wanting wanting to do. Uh, he says. Sadly, this isn't something we can easily. It'll take some I time. Go ask for a drink. It's a time. Uh, the uh, as you're going to to get a drink, uh, Borkad kind of like scurries around you, like stays on your shoulders, but he's like looking at this visitor. <sighs> I suppose your friend should know. My name is not Char. Hmm, that's a better name. Thember. Yes. In this one, Thember. Uh, uh, everyone, it's it's Thember Char. Thember Char. Oh my God. He, he oh. survived. Apparently. Just. Barely. How you doing? I was able to get to a place where I could switch to a different visage and... No. Oh, How'd they get you? You you seem like you are uh, pretty clear of this place, of that place. Well, I did attack the city and cause quite a ruckus. And they they injured you. How how they do that? Uh, there was a lot of them and just one of me. Did you announce your attack before you attack, or did you just? Oh, uh, the big roar in? did help. You gotta cut. You don't that remember out, that man. day, do you, Lassiter? <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking about another day. I'm sorry. Uh, the day that you left Grackle, Stug, you were kind of in a rush. Yeah, I remember big, all of big that. Big dragon being very mad about something. and I thought uh, there was another attack. Was Were they still recovering from just him blowing fire? <laughs> I, I thought he just ran a stream of fire through the city as he was running. Oh, fine. No, he 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 probably laid several streams of fire. Oh, good Listen, job! My first objective: slaughtering the entire keep entire faction of the keepers of the flame. Objective, but then, well, the other factions didn't take kindly to a big red dragon. Making waste. I was not happy with my situation when I found out. <sighs> and I might have gotten carried away. All the high districts. I have a lot to repair. Uh, are you sure we can't heal you? 
recipe. I mean, you can certainly try, but I do not believe that your magics will be powerful enough to heal me. Oh, okay. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Good time. Rest. We'll heal up. You just need a long rest. She'll be fine. Are you are you planning to stay here and until you recover fully? Oh, I was hoping to get out of the Underdark. Me too. I need to rebuild. You can come with us. My entire horde is lost to me. Rebuild. And join our party? No. Fly us up there. I won't be able to help you with your current situation. Happy tells me that you're working to clear out the remaining quarter of Bl Blingden Stone. And then yes. we're going to help you to the surface. And then that's the plan. Yeah. Pretty much the end. Uh, but if you could fly us up there, that would be quicker. I'm in no condition. Yeah, I see that. Oh, it was a nice thought. But I was hoping to join you. And of course. I was hoping Karad would join me. I don't think he's uh, leaving this. Of place. course. Oh. He, he his his he smiles and a tear falls from his eye and rather quickly evaporates. <laughs> oh the tear <laughs> No not he doesn't evaporate, but the tear evaporates. I, I need to get your shit together, buddy. <laughs> My bad. <clears throat> I hope you don't mind, Crab, but uh, I would never like. I would like to keep you in my. You're very special. To me. The feelings mutual. This is this is nice. Uh, bartender Sandy was her name. I happy, don't know. Uh, happy, happy, happy. T a p p y. Happy. What I said. Okay. Uh, drinks for a new comrade at arms. In arms. I don't and know. uh, I will go ahead into the kitchen and start cooking. You uh, cook, cook up a wonderful meal. Okay, if, can you roll me a... Hmm, how do we want to put this? Uh, yeah, we'll do a charisma uh, cooking utensils. Uh-oh. We lost Cyrus. I'm here. Or at least from, from roll 20. <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm still showing up. 20. Lost you for a second. You're back now. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I saw Karad's picture just disappear from Wall Twenty. So, Karad, do you have a description of what what meal you cook? It's pretty much everything that I know. The Bachar loves. It, it's it's gonna be a banquet. Lots of meat. Very spiced meat. Very hot. Uh, but the uh, food is good. The drinks are served. Served. Uh, you do end up getting, uh, by this time, is the ending shift of work. So the bar does start to get a little bit rowdy. Um, but because of all the, all the food that you cook, you 
you were cooking enough for a full red dragon. Yeah. The only thing is currently in his dwarven form and doesn't need that much food. So, um, there's plenty for everyone. Yeah, there's here. plenty for everyone. <laughs> Zappy starts making a lot of money because they are. You see several of the deep nooms try some of this food and they're like, ah, 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 and they're like, but and they're laughing at people for for who who try it, but they guzzle down the alcohol. It gets all rowdy. And Thember, Thember, during this time, uh, starts getting kind of uh, a little overwhelmed, and he kind of moves towards the, the stairs to the room. Um, it's a, Brad, Brad. Wait, uh. wait. Do you, do you mind if I sleep in you in your room? Uh, this is getting a little too much for me right now. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey, hey, which room is yours? And tell me, uh, hey, Crad, you see me be busy. Let me, uh, I'll go take care of, care of Th Thember? Thember? You said Thember. Thember here for you. Thank you. I'm guessing it's Tappy. And then uh, as he's walking out, the, uh, Ember comes, it just seems to, like, basically stay next to him and and a few times he kind of stumbles but thembers there to kind of like keep him propped up or ember is ember is basically being the service uh drake of uh for ember and he's taken to the room uh dinner rush is highly successful word gets around uh some of the ones like just run off and just more people start coming in. Uh, the drinks and the food is flowing. And uh, the the atmosphere, one, because of this amazing smelling meal, as well as the just the insanity that ensues because of how hot it is. Them never actually being, being familiar with this type of heat in the food. But enjoyment nonetheless. Uh, you do hear, easily hear, uh, the party, I should say, easily hears people talking and getting excited about the upcoming battle and finally being able to basically set up and, and then completely have access to everything and be able to completely rebuild Lingdon Stone. It is an exciting time. I challenge Ron to a drinking contest. All right. Without my necklace, of course, because that would be cheating. All right. Roll me a constitution saving throw. Bomb it. <laughs> That's not great. Oh. Nice. All right, first drink, Oronk goes, hmm, has already been drinking already. And you're like, whoa, whoa. All right, he, he grabs the next shot, just looks, stares at you, stares you in the eyes. Three, two, one, and you both shoot. I can't save. That would hit. Uh, Ron's like, ah, <laughs> and you, you go, whoa, and it starts giving you a little bit of wave. Uh, now you're both a little bit tipsy. Uh, another constitution save as the next shot goes down. Only like shit. You just take this one. You're like, you recovered from your last one. And Ron's like, mm. one more constitution saving throw. Uh, uh, um, oh, that was much better. Well, that one was good. I don't think I can beat that. Certainly try. Uh, yeah. Mm, this one I'm going to say because it was a natural 20. I'm going to be like, you both put it down. You both kind of stare at each other, kind of staring at each other down, be like, yeah, you're going to get sick. No, no, you're going to get sick. Uh, just kind of like this staring contest sort of thing. This is like the mental, like, when are you going to throw up? Uh, but you're both pretty, pretty fine. And another con save for the next shot. Oh, here goes my luck. <laughs> and la 
ambassador, you just kind of hurl and then right, you land face down on the table. Ron starts laughing and he, he says, I'll take care of this. And he, he grabs you, throw, throws you over his shoulder and fireman carries you back to your room and sleep off for the evening. Happy's like, oh, God. Gage, uh, seeing this, uh, uh, says, don't worry, Tappy, I'll take care of this. And he grabs some towels and starts cleaning up uh, Lassiter's vomit. Is there oh, anything any, anybody would like to do this evening before going to bed? Evening being the relative term. Well, I'd like to see if anyone's talking about the uh, the whole ooze situation. If it's gotten better or worse or stayed the same. Or... Uh, do you, are you going to ask around or just listen in? Uh, first, I'll ask around to see if there's anything. If not, then I'll just kind of sit with, with uh, Tappy and see uh, if just, she's heard anything. Yeah, just give me a straight charisma check. Charisma. It's not really oh, that nope. you're... Nope, nope. <laughs> uh, everybody's just getting rowdy because of the food and everything that um, uh, you, you haven't really been able to, to actually get into any good conversation with anybody, unfortunately. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check to see if you hear anything. Over. Uh, the latest you've heard is just people are excited to stop the incursions. You do hear some things about it's gotten worse, but at least they've been able to fend everything off uh, for now. Nothing where it's really reached anywhere too far in the city, but the Trader's Grotto is still not the best of places. So that's about it. Uh, the dig diggermatics to uh, stop in. Try they heard the same thing about the great food, food, and and they 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 chime in and they're there for you to answer any questions. They do say, "Hey, uh, we really don't have anything else for you uh, for right now, but please, if you you're welcome to stay here." Um, Enjoy yourself. Seems like Crad is enjoying doing his cooking. Oh, this is great food. Um, uh, you guys basically have ten days of downtime. Problem is, what do I do with it? <laughs> that is the question. Uh, Anything else you would like to do? Well, last year you're you're out. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just passed out. Uh, Tyra, Karad, anything else you would like to do before we roll into our nine day transition? <laughs> um, I mean, we kind of solved all the little side quests here and there. A few things that are kind of withstanding, but yeah. no, honestly, not really. I can't really think of something that's uh, pressing. Brad, anything you would like to do? Hmm, probably majority of the time is going to be spent um, taking care of uh, Thumberchild, uh, making sure that he. Heals up well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that well, I guess that, since I guess yeah. since Syra kind of helped train Ember, just kind of help her out with that. Oh, I thought we were doing it at night. No, we, this is just the the evening. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, and we'll go into to the yeah. Um, I 
probably um yeah no not but like at one point he'll yeah just get into the room and like fall asleep on the uh floor um yeah you yeah. when you en enter your room you see uh lying like right next to the bed is is ember uh and uh on the bed uh kind of scoot towards the wall like he's not sleeping in the middle of the bed but he is is sleeping um the cloak when you look at it isn't actually scaled it just looks scaled um not sure of the material that it's made out of but it feels scale ish but not actually scales uh and there he seems to have moved to the far side of the bed to give room You do see a good chunk of his um, left or his right side is looks to be have a a dark, almost scarred look to it. I um seeing that definitely would try to um crawl into bed like gently and all not wanting to wake him and stuff and uh, as you crawl into bed he gives a little stir and uh, he looks at you and, and, and smiles and lays a hand on your chest and he gets his face close I'm glad you're here to join me. And he goes in for the kish. Uh, not sure what's going on. The uh, crowd's just gonna stand still because he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> and he kisses you. <laughs> Uh, first he'll be surprised and then he's gonna kiss back he's gonna pull you uh, into the bed and it's just more of a short make out session and then it's kind of like a cuddle before going to sleep the next day uh, you wake up uh, you get a missive uh, sent to the party at the the uh, inn, saying, saying, due to your deeds, um, deeds, we will be ready to perform everything to attack. Um, the goal will be to have you guys go and find this Pudding King and put him down while everybody distracts the rest of the uses. We will have more information when we get closer to the event in about eight days. At that point, we are pretty much at a time skip of eight days. And what I would like to do, um, this will probably end up being the next next session. Um, we will discuss when that will exactly will be. We will have the battle for Blindenstone and our denouement. So I'd like you to think what you would like to accomplish in the next eight days while everybody's preparing. And also to think of what happens when you reach the surface. A couple things to think about. And I think we're going to end that there because I don't want to get into that whole feel and only have a short time. Because I think it will be a longer, prolonged battle.
right. Almost there. Good. One more. Let's... One more. We will discuss more about like the, the exact timing for this last session. Um, did, stream. did I miss anything important? Not Maybe. Really. Okay, cool.